Yay. <laughs> All right. I would like to welcome everybody to this session of Parenting Little Ones. We're going to be talking about active learners and learning enrichment today. And that's how to help young children thrive and grow. So we're excited to have this opportunity to connect with you all through Zoom and to help take your and to take your questions. Before we get started, um, I'd like to little know a little bit more about our guests today. So I'm going to run a poll, and it's going to ask you how old your little ones are, um, if, whether you work with them or you uh, have them at home. So I'm going to hit poll and launch polling. So I'll just give it a moment to. Let that sit for everyone. Let's scoot closer so I can see it. Let's see, I've got. You, I think it'll let you do multiple ages, I hope. <laughs> All right, we'll give it just a couple more seconds. Okay, so I'm going to share those results. It looks like the majority of our friends, can everybody see that? Two years old. All right, yeah, it looks like the majority is two, but we do have a fairly good range from yes. zero months yeah. to four years. So That's that'll good. help inform our discussion for tonight. So um, our panelists can help answer your questions a little bit better. And I'll stop sharing. Okay, and now, um, oh, is that still up? There we go. Okay, <laughs> so before we get started, um, I have a couple of housekeeping items to talk about with everybody. Um, first of all, the session is being recorded and you it will all be anonymous, but you can retrieve the, um, the recording later from our PPLD TV YouTube channel. Um, also, we have a Q&A feature down at the bottom. So that is all anonymous. Um, anything you wanna put in there, just go ahead and submit that and I'll make sure our panelists I'll get a chance to see that. Um, and we do have a drawing, and I want to make sure I get this right, give you the right information. So we have a drawing. Um, after this session, I'll be sending out a survey. I'll probably send it out tomorrow, and you'll have a chance to be entered into a drawing for that for a $50 gift card for your choice of Target, Walmart, Barnes and, Noble, uh, Barnes and Nobles, or King Supers. You'll also have a chance to be entered into the grand prize drawing, which is a six-month subscription to Kiwi Co-Create, which is a pretty cool thing to have. Um, you do have to have a PPLD library card, so if you don't have one, come on in. We'll help you out. We'll get you one. And um, you have to be an El, pa also El Paso County resident. So. Um, my name is Jenny, and I am the Early Literacy Librarian at the East Branch at the library. And now I would like to introduce our resource professionals. Um, first of all, let's start with Brittany from Hike It Baby. Brittany, do you want to unmute and tell us a little yeah. bit about yourself <laughs> and your organization? Yeah, I am a branch ambassador for Hike It Baby, um, the Colorado Springs branch. We're all over the country, but I just do hey. here. Um, hey. we're mainly, we mainly focus on kids birth through five, but we have a couple older kids. And uh, hopefully starting again in September, we host walks and hikes and anybody can come, anybody can host. And uh, yeah, if you need to know anything about outside, <laughs> usually... I can answer most of the questions or I know where to point you in the right direction. Awesome. All right, um, next we have Lynn Shepard. She's with Creation Cafe Yoga. Hi Lynn, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah, my name is Lynn Shepard. I am a registered yoga teacher. Uh, I, I do the gamut of yogas, but uh, I also do uh, kids and baby uh, yoga from basically six weeks up through, you know, teenager uh, and, and, and different types of practices with them as well as mindfulness and um, you know just general mental health physical movement that kind of stuff all right thank you and I've got Alana Jones from PPLD hi Alana <laughs> hi um, I'm Alana Jones and I work at library 21c as a also as a early literacy specialist librarian. So <laughs> I'm excited to be here today. All right. 
Awesome. So like I said, we do have the Q&A uh, feature for, um, for you all to put your questions in there. And while you're doing that, does anybody have any um, topics that they would like to start us off with? Any frequently asked questions or things that you wish that people would ask you about that you're just dying to share with the world? Oh, you're muted. There you go. <laughs> uh, I was, we were talking about earlier. So probably the most uh, frequently asked question we have currently right now is where creek plays are. So where kids between ages of like two, four and five uh, feel comfortable just playing in the water. We do live in Colorado, so we don't really have any beaches so creeks are the best option. I think I sent you the little map I made. So um, there's a lot of those. Uh, and then this time of year, the splash parks, they are all open right now. So that's exciting. So if anybody has any questions about um, good hikes to go on with, um, it seemed like most people had two-year-olds. Two is a weird age between like they can kind of walk, but they don't want to be carried, but then all of a sudden they want to be carried. So if we always suggest um, a soft carrier because they can fold really easily and you can put them in your bag or you can just have them around your waist so you can let them walk. And then when they get tired, you just throw them on your back and you walk back to the car, no matter how far you went. So that's usually what we say about that. Um, good places to start, Fountain Creek. Bear Creek, uh, places up north, uh, Palmer Park. Those are our usual go-tos, flat. <laughs> I have those maps that you sent me and I can, would you like me to send those out to people when yeah, I send out so, the Yeah, uh, so I sent you those stroller ones because usually in the two, the anywhere before two, uh, the kids are usually in strollers or parents uh, like I felt more comfortable having my kid in a stroller than a carrier because you can put all your stuff in it and if something happens it's easier to run back to the car or have anything you need handy and um, especially before the age of one uh, most strollers the car seat clicks in so that's like really nice because then the kids like sleep so I sent you the maps for stroller friendly trails the trails and open space coalition does a great job of if you're so worried about like seeing a lot of people they have on their website specific trails for uh, it's called get spread out and it's trails like when they first posted this I've lived here for five years and I'm like I don't even know where that is and I had to look it up so it's a great resource and then the creek play one is a great resource too like North Cheyenne Canyon uh, is usually number one uh, wildflower park um, the closer you get to the mountain we tell people the cleaner it is <laughs> the closer you get to Manitou Springs, the cleaner it is. <laughs> uh, so yeah. All right. This must feel. <laughs> how about, let's see, how about Lynn and Alana? Do you have any frequently asked questions or things that you'd like to share first before we get any questions? Uh, well, on my end, uh, in, when it comes to movement and yoga, I often get asked like baby yoga, like what they can hardly hold their heads up. What's that all about? And, and it's, it's a combination of using yoga poses in a way that allows you to spend quality time with your infant on up toddler and older. Um, and you can, instead of doing traditional tummy time where they're just laying on their belly, you can do it in different ways getting some of that skin to skin contact and all those things that we know are great for baby development, but in a way that's not sort of like, oh, now I gotta like do tummy time. Like oh, my kid only got 10 minutes of tummy time. Like it's a way to incorporate it, make it more fun, make it more involved. Um, and you know, it's not like the, you're asking your baby to do a headstand or anything crazy like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a progression that you can take and create a, it's truly a practice. It's something you can take from the time that they're very young and incorporate throughout their development as they grow older. And then as they get older and they start to develop more emotional awareness, you can start to incorporate some of that mindfulness activity. Um, and, it's, and you know, it's ways to kind of continue that. And then you can also pull that out into nature. So the next time you're in the woods, do tree pose. The next time you see a dog do downward dog, you know what I mean? Like 
there's ways to kind of take it into every aspect of your life, especially with little kids, because they, they, there's no shame in their game. They like to do, you know, stand on their head in the middle of the street. So it's okay. So that's usually people are kind of like, what do you mean yoga for little kids? But it's not like a typical, what you've probably practiced yoga practice. It's a little tweaked to, to gear towards those guys. Is there an age that you find um, incorporating the mindfulness is most effective? Um, so I, I, age is tricky. I think it's more about knowing your kid or the kids that you're around because some kids are very emotionally intelligent, very young, and they know what they, they can identify anxiousness. They can identify when they feel uncomfortable emotionally at a younger age. And then there are other kids that it takes longer to get there. So for me, we go through the motions of it in a class even though some of the kids may not understand what we're talking about, but hopefully that those breathing techniques and some of the meditation techniques and things like that will kind of sink in there somewhere. And then they can latch onto that when they come to more of an understanding about, oh, this is the time I can do some deep breathing. This is the time that I should visualize whatever. Um, so I, I try, you know, age-wise, I'd say it's, usually in that four to five when you're starting to get into pre-K kindergarten. Um, and then, you know, I, I gotta tell you, I have three children. I have two boys that are older. And then my youngest is a girl, she's six. And she's far more emotionally intelligent at a much younger age than the boys ever were. Um, you know, they, but they also weren't, they didn't, stuff didn't bother them. So I think you just have to know the kids that you're around and kind of just, keep plugging it in there, little nuggets, and someday maybe they'll latch onto it. I'd love to add on to that. We actually took, uh, I think, one of your classes, um, and my son, he gets, like, really worked up, and it was kind of just like, oh, remember your big breaths, big breaths, and he was like, and he'll actually do it sometimes, so yeah, it's like, it really works. It's great, and he was only, I think, three when we took the class, and so yeah, he still remembers. Good, good, yeah. I think, and the other thing too is little like the word mindfulness, honestly, as an adult, I, it, it doesn't really mean a lot. Like, what does it mean to be mindful? So wherever you can incorporate what language your family uses or the people that are around you use, we all know it means like, you know, trying to like not worry about the past, not worry about the future, being in the moment. So whatever that is for your family, like don't get hung up on the language, don't get hung up on the buzzwords make it work for you. Like give yourself some space and just say like, oh, in our family, it's big breaths. In this other family, it might be like whatever it might be. So yeah, you know, just try to be, make it work for you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Wonderful thing about that is that everybody in the family can participate too. Mm -hmm. It's not just the child remembering to take the deep breath. The mom at that moment has to take her deep breath mm -hmm. to, you know, show model to the child. And, and that, is helping her to be more present for the child too. So yeah, yeah. there's the, we call in yoga, we call it a Durga breath. So it, you breathe in and out through your nose and it's a long, super slow inhale. So as you breathe in, you can feel your belly lift up, up through the chest, all the way high. It takes like five or six counts to get there. And then you can hold it for a beat and then you just reverse it. So exhale through the nose, the chest settles down, the ribs come together, the belly softens, and it takes a long time. And it's actually physically triggering your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the calming side of your nervous system, the non fight or flight one. So that's one where, I mean, whether you're nursing at 2 a.m. and baby is fussy and you just had it and you need some big, long, deep, deep breaths, just having that in your, in your toolkit at any point, I mean, I can't tell you how many times like in the car with three kids who are screaming and freaking out and you're stuck in traffic and it's hot. And, you know, I, there's a lot of deep breathing in my life when it comes to stuff like that. So, you know, it, it both ways, like you said, you model it for your children. Like I, they can sense my stress. I'm using that as a way to get to a, a better place. So I think it's a really good point. Thank you. Yeah. And I certainly couldn't listen to what you were saying without taking that deep breath and relaxing myself, <laughs> which felt really good. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, as, as far as um, at the library, um, people tend to ask 
what kinds of programs we have available that will provide active learning, you know, different fun things to do. And we, we have in the past had many, many programs. And now as we, you know, COVID went through, we, we, you know, edited it a little bit, but we're moving back toward having more programs available for families. And so come September, I believe it is, we're going to start having, um, you know, our typical story time and toddler time and baby time available for families. And in each of those programs, the library staff really tries to focus on active learning, getting the kids involved, um, doing the songs and the chants and the rhymes and the activities so that they are learning. Are there any interactive books that are your favorite to use in those story times that really get kids like up and moving or really? Oh my gosh. Um, I know on the spot. In my head, it's like, oh, wow. Um, I can see the cover. I love the one that is, um, that has the real, oh gosh, I can't even say, what is it? The tall bear on the front. And the, I can't even remember what, I think it was Carl is the author. Um, what is it? The animal something. I can't remember. I'm so sorry. I will, you know what? I, I will uh, uh, come up with a list and you can send it to the group. I know at the sound library, Pete the Cat. Was oh yeah, name. Pete the Cat's great fun. Mm -hmm. That's great fun. I love those that have you clap and move like animals. Look at that one, I am yoga. I love that one that's the, the breathe one with the bear on the front. Yeah, that is so fun with Kira. Kira Wiley, is that her um, book? I think that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. It's, and she has great um, CDs too, as far as that goes too, which our library has. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we like to have a lot of things available. And um, we always make sure that we're incorporating a lot of rhymes and, and um, you know, active things for the, the kids who come and the parents. We always encourage the parents to actually get up there and move and, and you know do everything that the child does because that's very important, whether you're doing the wheels on the bus or, or you know, uh, going on a bear hunt, just to have everybody all working together. Um, your kids see that and they know it's important and they're learning at the same time. Lynn, I'm curious if you've ever seen the Babar yoga book. No, but that oh, sounds awesome. It is, is and it comes with a, uh, when you purchase it, it comes with a big poster with all the yoga poses and the elephants are in all the different poses. And then um, yeah. there's another one, Alphabet, and it's in Hebrew and it's, um, I think it's children making the poses of the Hebrew letters. So that one, I've used those with little little ones before. It was pretty fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is fun. That is fun. I, there's another one that I have that um, it's a whole series, but one of, I'll give you the title of one and you can look it up. It's called Goodnight Animal World. And the author is Giselle Shardlow. And um, it's where you go through and it talks about different animals and it has the picture of the animal pose on the page. Oh, and good. it talks about the country that the animal is from. So you're like kind of hitting a lot of notes. And that's one, she's got like a bunch of like six or seven of them. And um, you can kind of hit those. And one of the things that I think is, especially um, as you are with the younger ones, like a lot of the people today um, have, and you're setting up those bedtime routines. Sorry. Well for my family. Oh, Amber <laughs> alerts. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the bedtime routine. So you kind of get the wiggles out a little bit and then you kind of work your way down into softening and then maybe end up with, you know, Shavasana, which is basically going to sleep. As we all know, if you've ever done yoga, it's the sleeping at the end of the practice. Um, so, you know, that's a way that if, if you need to create a routine or start incorporating that into routine, it's definitely, there's a lot of books out there that you, Babar sounds awesome though. I love Babar, so. Yeah. It's Sorry about my dogs barking there for a minute. I think they're reacting. Storm alarms are going off in the background. Oh my gosh, there's a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I haven't had any questions pop up in the Q&A section. So for our viewers out there, um, anything we're open to discussing almost, I'm going to say almost anything. <laughs> so go ahead and do that. So um, I, I was just going to talk a little bit about what active learning was or is, <laughs> it's like getting, using all of the child's senses to, and their emotions and their social ability, their thinking skills all at once in order to learn more about what they're doing. So they're not just, they're not just hearing the story, they're participating in the story. And so their left brain and their right brain both interact together and they're building, you know, more, um, synapses in the brain so that you know they're able to learn they're, they those gross motor and small motor skills all get um, motivated as well um, it's great for especially for kids who have short attention span which is pretty much any toddler in toddler time <laughs> but yes you get you get those you get the kids um, involved every you know few minutes and you're able to keep a story time going with those kids. Um, whereas if you were just reading at them, it would not work at all. Um, uh, and they, they have to know that there's no one right way to do an activity. If we're doing head, shoulders, knees, and toes, and they don't really want to do it quite that way, or they can't, it's just fine. You know, they can do it their own way. Um, uh, and the nice thing is, too, that when you're doing it together, both you and the child are learning something. You're learning about your child and how they're understanding things and, and what they're capable of. And your child is learning that you support them and that, that um, you're going to remember that song later and you're going to do it together because it's fun. And um, that's really the most important part is that it's fun. I think that has to do a lot to do with modeling too. When we're in our story times at the library or toddler times or baby times, it's, it's, we really focus on parent interaction and um, setting that example too, because, you know, why would they be active if you're not being active? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, children also learn to listen more carefully to, you know, they, their, their attention span expands because they're doing something that they like doing. And so they're paying more attention to what's going on. Um, and um, let's see, I'm trying to think if I hit all the things I wanted to say. You build language skills, communication between each other and your vocabulary, you know, and how you're, you're doing things. And like, um, if you were doing head, shoulders, knees, and toes, and all of a sudden you did cabeza for your head, you know, then, and you're doing new languages with the same exact actions, that's making another connection there, something that your child uh, will use later on, so. Yeah. And I love active learning because it's something you can do anywhere. If you're standing in the line at the grocery store and your groceries are this high in your basket and all of a sudden it is time for your child to have the biggest temper tantrum in the world. If you can find something that they like to distract them that you guys share, you know, then maybe you won't have to deal with that and leave the whole cart of groceries, which I had to do before when I had little ones. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's kind of a, it's a nice thing. You can do it in the doctor's office, in the car seat, you know, anywhere. I got one, I just remembered. <laughs> um, so uh, this summer, uh, one of the like social distancing friendly things you can do is going camping. Uh, a lot of people are really, really intimidated to take young children camping. And I'm here to say it's not as hard as you think, <laughs> uh, especially here in Colorado. The options are endless. Um, you don't have to do dispersed camping and poop in the woods. There are so many options of like flush toilets and water. Like even down here in Fountain, there's a KOA with a water park. 
Like mm-hmm. I consider that camp still. Um, yeah. My cool. tips are just make sure your child, especially if you're going to the mountains, just make sure your child's warm enough. Um, a lot of people bring a pack and play. Um, I actually don't recommend that because they're higher off the ground. So it doesn't retain as much heat. We suggest like a sleeping pad for children to sleep on. Um, those sleep sacks do really well. They have a special, um, if it's really cold out, um, the kids can actually even wear their like snowsuits. So like the ones that have like the arms and the little hands and then the feet, and that'll keep them pretty warm. Um, just bring stuff to entertain them, like sand toys and all that stuff. Um, with my kids, I mainly go camping where there's water. So like creeks and lakes, uh, especially up in Denver and Fort Collins, uh, even Lake Pueblo down here, there are two campgrounds at Lake Pueblo State Park. Um, and it really just makes the day go by. The kids playing in the water, you got your shade tent and just like hanging out all day. And then uh, you know, fire at night, or what if there's a fire man? Uh, glow sticks, uh, fake light, fake fires, because you never know we're gonna be in a fire ban all of a sudden. Um, fire ban doesn't include propane tanks though, so you can still bring like propane girls and everything and butane. Um, I'm trying to think of, yeah, stay warm, toys, and you can even tent camp. So yeah, those are my. Uh, and if you if it's like your first time stay within like an hour because I've had friends who I've gone camping with before and I wake up in the morning without cell phone service and Woodland Park or whatever and they're gone and their tent's gone because they like bailed at like three in the morning so don't don't be afraid to just leave (laughs) so that's the thing is stay within an hour and if it's like this ain't working because like my kid's teething or whatever just leave you tried that I think that's my main take away from everything I've ever done with my kids. If you fail, you fail, but at least we tried. It's all about, like she was saying, uh, you're in line at the grocery store. It's all about the mentality. Like, so like you can get frustrated and like just cram up or you can like use it as like a active learning experience. Um, but camping, you can leave. Don't leave the grocery store. <laughs> I, had a friend, I know they probably friend. didn't like me, but I, I had, had five kids, kids with me, okay? That's I had a friend <laughs> whose kid threw up on their shopping cart once and she's oh, like we just gotta go and oh, she like left no. the store. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can leave that but camping i would anybody oh um if you've never been camping before and you're looking for stuff um mountain equipment retailers um they moved to it's over by cpcd's main thing over there on 24th cimarron I don't remember the exact, but Mount Equipment and Geronimo, they're all secondhand. Okay. They have so much stuff and it's like way cheaper than going to REI. And then if any of you are military, Fort Carson has free rentals for a lot of this stuff too. So, um, and honestly, just like post on like the Hike It Baby Facebook page or any of these mom things, like looking to borrow stuff everybody's got stuff like I let my friend borrow a three-person tent the other day that I haven't used in like four years so it, like if you're just if you're willing to do it and do a little bit of effort you could and it's a great weekend and for the price it's like you know getting outside and this is great yeah it's so good, <laughs> good luck. Yeah. they can be noisy it doesn't yeah, matter it yeah <laughs> It'll scare the bears away anyway, right? (laughs) I I saw people, someone asking about bears today and I was just like, man, I mean, there are bears some places, but honestly, like uh, if you're anywhere up and down the front range, you're not going to see too many bears. Uh, If you're afraid of bears and mountain lions, don't go to Cheyenne Mountain. um, uh, There's some places (laughs) like there's some places in Rocky Mountain National Park, but uh, I would say just stick in like Denver, Fort Collins for your first time, because th- those are goods too, because in the day, say you get bored, it's like, oh, we're in Denver. There's the stuff to do in Denver. There's playgrounds, there's museums, and you're, I live in Fountain, so it's like an hour and a half from me. So it's just nice to have like a place close to be like, oh, we're going to go to the children's museum or we're going to go to the zoo. And then we're just going to camp that night. And if it doesn't work, I just don't. <laughs> It looks like we have our first question in the chat. 
and this is uh, looks like it's directed towards everybody. It says, "What are the active? What are the activities for active learners? Or is there any? Are there any particular activities that you recommend for curious kiddos?" So many things um, with babies. Uh, let them play in a tray of applesauce or baby food or even Cool Whip, and it doesn't matter if they get that on their fingers. Um, build something on old knowledge. So if every day you're newborn, you've been playing and you have something hanging over them and every day it goes from side to side, then change it, have it go backwards and forwards so that they learn that things have different ways of doing things or, or you know, hide a rattle down one side underneath a, a blanket and shake it and see if baby will turn their head that direction um, or the opposite way. Um, uh, provide an age appropriate sensory bin. Um, things like, let's say you have um, a little shaker thing that way. They are all kind of shakers of different types. You know, just kind of make them go by the baby and, and have them hear the different kinds of things um, that are happening with the different toys. Definitely let them mouth them and and interact with them. Um, if the baby smiles or coos at you, then respond in kind and wait for your, you know, after you say something back, then wait for your child to answer. It might take a little while for them to process, but they may just say coo or something like that. And um, they'll be interacting with you, even if they just look at you, um, the new, newest ones, you know, they're, they are making that uh, connection with you and they're communicating, which is very important. Um, you can make those gel bags where you take um, a Ziploc and you fill it with some hair gel and some small kinds of items that are in there that won't poke through a Ziploc and then put that Ziploc in another Ziploc and then put duct tape all around it so nothing comes out um, and put it down there on the floor right near your baby so that they can push against the gel and, and see the items move along inside of it. Um, uh, encourage your baby to, to reach for things and to kick them. Um, always talking to your child about, oh, look what you're doing. Did you see the ball? And you, you almost touched the ball and things like that. Um, what else? I'd like to want. put a plug in for Lena Start there too, because oh, yes. a lot of what a lot of what Alana is talking about is about um, interacting and verbal, um, working with your child, building their vocabulary and things like that. And if you aren't aware of what Lena Start is, um, PPLD is um, doing this really awesome program and you should definitely check out more of that. It's basically about interacting and um, increasing the vocabulary, the verbal turns that you have with your child. So I just wanted to pop that in there. That is a little time. bit. <laughs> <laughs> we could move to toddlers. If someone else has anything for babies, does anyone else have some ideas for babies? I was just going to demonstrate with my um, sure. baby Boba Fett. So if you guys have <laughs> checked out some of my videos I did, for PPLD on their YouTube channel, you've probably seen baby Boba Fett, he shows up a lot. But when we were talking about different ways to do tummy time, there's, you know, as you're sitting here in a seated position, you're getting a stretch up the back of your legs, you're using your core, you know, using those stabilizers. You can have baby just lay right on his belly or her belly right here. And there's the opportunity for some massage in here so you get more of that contact. But it, you know, you're not just doing the thing on the ground where they're like, oh, I hate this. And my children hated it. So you know, you've got that one. And then um, the other one that's super fun and it can also be kind of a workout for the grown up is you kind of let baby lay on your shins and then bring them up. Oh, oh my gosh, my core. Here we go. But you can do it as a core exercise like that. Or if you want to just lay down on your back and you can do this kind of stuff and then that gives baby the opportunity to work on those neck muscles and that kind of stuff. And then you throw in all the chatting, like, oh, you're on my legs. And you can do anatomy, you can use foreign language, you can sing a song, um, whatever, whatever vibes for your family, you know. Um, so that's those are some fun things I think you can do where you incorporate your motion with baby's motion 
and you get that, you can do the eye contact to get all that good stuff, so. Did you have anything, Brittany? Yeah, I, mine's for like older kids, but um, okay. older. You can start, you mean toddler or? or yeah, like a toddler. Course. Okay, well, um, I'll start with toddler and then I'll pick up. <laughs> um, well, babies like old snacks, but um, it, on hikes, we have like bingo cards. That seems like a popular one. So the kids will like go on like a bingo board. Um, a lot of things is like, oh, wow, look, you know, this tree has leaves on it. Did it have leaves last time we were here? Or look, there's flowers. Were there flowers last time we were here? It's a lot of like, I guess, observational active learning. So more of like, oh, did you see that rock? Look at how there's like striations in the rock. Or, you know, we have to be careful when we're out here. Why, you know, because there might be like snakes or, you know, <laughs> my kids are obsessed with finding bugs. So if I'm like, there might be a bug ahead, they'll like take off for that bug. <laughs> so, so a lot of things just being like, it doesn't have to be like a drag. You know what I mean? You can make it a learning experience like, you know, you know, oh, I think I, I hear something. What do you hear? And it's like you like that mindfulness. You like be quiet and like, oh, that's a bird. Oh, that's a dog. Oh, I hear like the wind through the trees. Um, so that kind of stuff um, really helps get the kids moving in the right direction. And, it, you know, they're learning too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my kid fell over. <laughs> um, some other things that toddlers might like um let's see if your if your toddler is two years old you could make a day all about number two so everything is number two they uh they jump two times they clap their hands two times they and then they get uh two strawberries or uh, two cheerios you know everything about that day is important for that child and they love that it's all about them um, playing hide and seek, as important as that is with your infant, it's also important to do with your toddler. They get such a kick out of hiding where, of course, you can see them and, and having, you know, and, and you hiding things too um, for them, like hide their favorite toy or their blankie, but, you know, might leave a little edge available so that they can find it. Um, building with blocks all kinds of blocks. Babies like, um, you know, regular types of blocks, but they also, I mean, toddlers, they also like to have, you know, some bristle blocks. These are really good because they are um, a very good sensory kind of a thing. They love to touch these and put them together. So, um, and my set came from a used store. So it's, a, it's something that is, you know, usually found uh, second hand, which is really nice. They're so durable. They last forever. Um, let's see what else. Um, uh, if you do a, a sensory bin for that age, um, you know, find something like all on a theme. Pretend you have all kinds of things that swim in the ocean inside your bucket. And then you talk about them, you know, what color they are, <laughs> they have teeth things like that. Um, cook with your toddler. Um, and this is, this is, you know, some parents don't kind of want to get their toddler in the kitchen quite oh, yet. Yeah. <laughs> but there are things that they could do. They can put blueberries on top of something. They can um, help set the table if you are standing a foot away from the table holding one plate, which they take the plate and then they put it down. Um, you know, things like that. They can do that. Um, you, they can actually cut watermelon with a butter knife. It does work. <laughs> so that's something that, um, you know, they would do. Um, also, if you were making shish kebabs and you cut up vegetables, they could put the vegetables into a Ziploc bag with the marinade, you know, for later. So there are lots of ways that you can incorporate them to help cooking. Um, sing songs and dance with them and um, find things that have, you know, funny, funny repeats to them. Um, kids will love to have songs um, to do. Paint with water, paint with paint, it doesn't matter as long as, you know, have a, have a smock, an old shirt for them to wear. Um, 
So those are those are important things. Oh, always get down to their to their eye level when you're talking to them, because then they know that they're important and what they have to say is important. And wait for that conversation again, just like we were doing with babies. It's it's a little faster with a toddler, except that they tend to repeat themselves quite a bit. But <laughs> yeah. Um, so those are some fun things to do uh, with your toddler. Yeah, when I do a toddler yoga class, I find that there's usually two sort of overarching themes. One, they lo usually love animals and yoga poses lend themselves very much to being an animal. Uh, so that's one where we can incorporate an animal story, like going on a bear hunt, you can go on a bear hunt and incorporate some motion, extra motion in there. So if you, you know, whatever you're doing. And then um, also they love to mimic. So I do an activity with the parent and the toddler where it's like you're a mirror. So you move one hand and you see if, it, if they'll move, will they move the opposite hand or will they move the mirror hand, uh, make a funny face, um, you, know, uh, you know, bend over, all of that kind of stuff. Because when they see you being silly, it's part of that modeling. It shows that there's fun in lots of ways um, and they're still learning and it creates a space where it, they feel safe being silly themselves. You know, it doesn't have to be serious all the time. Yeah, good ideas. All right, we have another question in the chat. It says, we have to be pretty cautious with COVID and our three-year-old, but we would love to do some type of outdoor play dates for socialization. Does anyone know of any good programs? We liked the idea of Tinker Garden, but our one-year-old naps, so have to we have to work around her schedule. Any suggestions? Thank you. That directed at me. <laughs> um, Heidi Baby is not hosting hikes right now because technically we are, but um, the rules are like a little too much for me and my like three kids. But um, there are some awesome Facebook groups um, that have events that are still going on, and you can see who's RSVP which is great. So like you can see, like um, usually I host a lot right now through a Facebook group called Walkin' Mamas and I can actually post that in the chat. And we should probably get like three or four families that show up. And like we went today, oh, another great creek play is Sonderman. It's hidden. Most people don't even know it exists. It's awesome. Um, it's right west of downtown and I went there today with three other families I posted on the, the Facebook group hey we're doing a, a creek play today who wants to show up and it's a great way to get the kids out and we played I think we played there at the creek for four hours so yeah it's great I don't know I'm trying to think of anything else um I think if you go to meetup.com there might be some some things I know um a lot of my friends are military. I don't know if you're military. Fort Carson has some um, things you can RSVP to, like toddler times outside and stuff. Um, I don't want to plug a different library system, but another library system in town is hosting an outdoor story times on Wednesdays and Fridays at 1030. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> we are doing that still on Tuesdays. Tuesdays, um, okay. In, at, at, at Library 21C, we're doing oh, okay. it the second Tuesday of the month. Yes, I don't know if what's East doing. Are you guys doing outdoor? Not for outdoor. We're doing indoor. We're only doing indoor. Yeah. But uh, the Security Public Library is hosting an outdoor story time on Wednesdays and Fridays at 1030. And it's outside. And they have a brand new playground across the parking lot, which is awesome. So if it's, it's a great story time, too. They do a great job. That's cool. And their prizes for their story time are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to go check that out. Yeah. <laughs> I thought yeah. ours were really good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yours are good too. They're, I got them all, man. Those yeah. cups were stuff. really fun. <laughs> love free stuff, man. I'm going anywhere. Um, and there's for those of you who are out there, we're still having our summer reading or oh, summer yeah. adventure program. So please sign um, up. The city of Colorado Springs uh, has, oh, the Pioneer Museum does something on Fridays with kids, like once a month, that's a big hit. 
And then the city of Colorado Springs for their 150th anniversary has, you guys are giving away those packets, right? If you go to like five different sites and complete the challenges with like your kids, I know this isn't socialization, but you get free Josh and John's ice cream. And I went the other day and scoop of ice cream there is 450. So free ice cream. That's awesome. Challenges. Yeah, that one's a good one. Um, I know El Paso County Parks is doing a celebration too at the yes. county parks because I live up in Black Forest. So, um, so you might check out their website and to see they've got all different kinds of things going on. So I'm sure there's probably some family friendly outdoor and you can probably check it out and decide if you think it's going to be appropriate for your family vis-a-vis -vis COVID. So. Really just going to the park and the splash park. There's usually a lot of things. I know it's like awkward, like being like, hi, our kids get along. We should talk uh, or like whatever. But I mean, that's how I met a lot of my friends that and then the story times at the library is how I've met like 90% of the people I know. But yeah, it's like tough right now. I feel so bad for the people who moved here in the last like year or two. I'm like, I'm so sorry. You don't have any friends. You can come hang out with me now. <laughs> um. As far as preschoolers go and activities that they can do, um, you can make also a sensory bin, but this time have real things in it like hinges and screws and nuts and bolts and things like that. Because um, kids really like to have real things to look at and compare. You could also put things from your kitchen in there. Um, measuring cups and things, which you would eventually, you know, let's go do something with these things inside this basket. Um, paint with water on the sidewalk or on the fence. Um, that's yesterday. really fun to do. It's a good <laughs> yeah. outdoor activity. Um, make a nature sculpture out of things that you find in the wild. <laughs> um, that could be fun. Um, uh, oh, taking like um, some rice or something like that and putting it on a pan and then drawing letters inside of it. And they can see their, their letters from their name or other things like that. Um, exploring new foods. This is one thing that preschoolers are very hesitant to do. Um, and so one of the ways that you can make trying new foods a little less of a chore is to have a tasting thing where you, you compare its color, its texture, you know, what, what it looks like, what other kinds of food they've had, um, have them use their, you know, to smell it, to do all the, use all their senses, and then to take a little bite. And you know, the only thing is that they should all take a bite so that they can can actually see if they like it or not um, a little bit. But um, yeah, by by the time you've done all those other kinds of things to using all your senses, they're a little more um, agreeable to trying something new you know, whether it's a different kind of pasta or whatever, you know. Um, one other thing, oh, setting the table. They can do much better job with setting the table and clearing their plate. Um, they can do that um, and scrape off their, their plate and hand it to you at the sink. Um, tossing a scarf in the air. That's always a fun thing to do all, um, all different ways. And, you know, you as a parent and the child, you could juggle them back and forth or you can both try and throw one as high as you can or or put it on different parts of your body and uh you know see see if you can put it you know hold it on your arm or hold it on your knee in the air um plant something together that's fun um oh the fly swatter game you can um uh you know as a parent you can take a piece of paper and squish it up. And if you have a nice, clean, very cheap one from the dollar store, fly swatter, then you can practice, see if you can hit the paper in the air. Or um, even, even, you know, if you make a piece of paper with different letters all around the child, um, then have them hit the fly swatter on the letter that a word begins with, uh, banana, you know, and then they, and they'd hit it. Um, so it's another way to get, you know, all parts of their brain working. Um, 
few minutes. Um, I think that's good. I do. There is one more question in the chat. Sure. Uh, it says, I have a hard time balancing my attention between my baby, 12 months, and toddler, 3.5 years. I want to have both actively involved and engaged. Any ideas? Uh, first off, give yourself all kinds of room. <laughs> like, uh, it's so easy to get caught up in the, I need to do A, B, C, D, E, F, or G to you know, enrich my children when really just spending time with them and whatever comes organically in the moment. So um, I, have, I have three kids, they're, they're a bit older now, but um, as I watch the older ones and I would be playing with my toddlers and my infant is just absorbing all of that activity. So just the fact that they're sitting or, you know, nearby, they hear all the words, they hear the rhymes, they hear all of that. So even though it feels like you're not necessarily paying attention to one or the other, that they're, they are, they're learning that socialization and that interaction. So that's part of it. And then um, like for me too, what I would try to do is make it so that instead of me trying to put myself out for both of them, I would try to make it more of a group thing. So like if um, we were doing, you know, some sort of emotion thing, I might encourage the toddler to help the baby, you know, it, again, within reason, we all understand that. But like one of the things that we do a lot with the babies is where you'll do um, like the cross body movements because that helps with that uh, left, right brain, uh, the corpus callosum in the brain there. So like if you've got the baby there and you're like, hey, we're gonna touch, opposite foot and hand, hey, toddler, can you come over and help out? Or can you demonstrate the same movement, you know, show baby brother or baby sister how to do that? And so um, it's a way to, and, and again, like seriously, five minutes is beneficial. Like it doesn't have to be some big production because chances are good toddlers can get bored with it and want to go do something else anyway. So just be kind to yourself, keep the expectations low. And just know that all of that interaction is positive. It's nothing is, is going to come out of that. That's a bad thing. So be graceful to yourselves. I love what you said, Lynn, about, you know, being graceful to yourself. That is so important. It's part of surviving. It really is. <laughs> um, I was thinking maybe the water play would be a good thing because you could have a spot for baby to be splashing that you're keeping an eye on baby as well as the other one, you know, could be painting or could be doing all sorts of things with the water, but they, they would play together to some degree, but also, you know, on their own in, in their own way. Um, water plays fun. So. That was my suggestion was babies kind of along for the ride. Yeah. Like, I feel bad sometimes, but like you said, they're like, I have a four, three, and this one. So it's kind of like, like water play is great. Like at the creek, kids are playing, set the kid, other kid down. And like you said, they're, they're paying attention. Like this one's learning to crawl and he's not even six months old. And I'm like, what's happening in here? Um, but you're right. They're, they learn, they're just like absorbing everything. Yeah. Like you said, you got to give yourself grace. It's not like, I can stare at you baby and give you the same attention I gave brother. And I know it feels bad because it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, but honestly, they're, they'll be fine. <laughs> uh, just like having like set up and I like the interact, like you said, the interacting with each other is good. As long as they're not like, my daughter likes to smoosh him. So just don't smoosh him. <laughs> just smooching allowed. I'm smooching him. <laughs> you see other adults in your life, whether it's a partner or a neighbor or a friend or whatever, like it is important to get a little bit of that one-on-one -on -one time with each of your kids. Oh yeah. So wherever you can, you know, hey, auntie, can you watch baby or toddler? So, and again, five or 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, dad, can you keep an eye on them? Whatever it is, um, or, you know, and the other thing too that I would say too is the other adults in your in your kids' lives are going to have ways of connecting with those kids in an active learning situation. So, for example, my husband loves to take the kids out like at twilight, like right now, and they'll go out on a walk in in the neighborhood and they'll listen for peepers or they'll you know look for bugs or whatever it is, and it's just you know, and it's 
like around the block. This is not like a big production, but that's, you know, five or 10 minutes, 15 minutes that I get by myself. Or if one of them stays behind, I get that quality time with that one kid. Um, so, you know, again, just find the, find it where you can find it and don't try to force it because you'll make yourself crazy and it won't feel natural to the kids they pick up on this. So. All right. Well, we have a we have about five minutes left and there is another question here. Um, it says, any ideas for independent play for my 18 month old when I'm in the room with him but need to work on something for a short period of time? Well, you already said those sensory bins and those busy boxes and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Those are good. Yeah, those are good. Up, like good. You set up a card table with um, things hanging down so that the baby could crawl in and out of uh, scarves and colorful things, um, the bells hanging to on it, all sorts of kinds of things to kind of make an upside down playpen, you know, to have all that. But then baby could still crawl around and, and or walk around at that point. Um, Might be a little, little older. I know with preschoolers before I've taped paper to the underside of low tables and let them like color upside down like that. That, yeah. that keeps them occupied for a while. <laughs> cool. I know um, introducing like, you know, especially if you have multiple kids and you've got like a billion toys because they're all at different ages and none of them want to give anything away ever. But in, you know, hiding something back for a while and then after, you know, a couple of weeks it comes back out and it's sort of new again. Um, I think that's really great for kids in that sort of, um, you know, 18 months, I guess, is technically a toddler. I, I consider that sort of pre-toddler because, you know, they're not necessarily fully working around the room so much. But, you know, it's the newness and, and the, um, uh, the novelty that I think keeps those kids engaged. So whatever you can do to take something and make it seem new um, is, you know, my, we always joke around, like, if you go over to a friend's house, their kids' toys are always the best toys ever because they're new toys. So anything that you can do to create that novelty, I think is helpful, especially like you, you know, like we all have Zoom meetings. Right now. My six-year-old's walking up here asking for toothpicks. I don't know why. Shoot, watch your neck. <laughs> we all know how that is. We call it toy jail. Yeah. They go to toy jail in the curl space. And then all of a sudden they magically reappear six months later. Wow, where'd this one go? <laughs> That's great. I think that can help kids not feel so overwhelmed too when you have all the toys out all at once it can feel a little um it can feel just a little overwhelming and so yeah like that idea of alternating what's available mm -hmm. and um I, I come from a big montessori background and a lot of that part is the prepared space which is a little hard for parents on the front end but if you know, if you know that you're going to be in the room and you need to be on the computer or doing some work, if you can, whatever it is, create a space where it feels special for the kid. It's at their height. It's stuff that they can do. Like that's all part of that sort of like taking responsibility and learning on their own and and um, engaging in those things. So whether it's like I found a, a little low table and I'm going to do this or I put a mat on the floor and there's going to be some bristle blocks, which I still love even to this day as a nearly 50 year old lady. Um, you know, so those types of things, I think if you take the time to set it up so it feels special, that helps out too. But I mean, they're 18 months old. You, you, you're, let's be honest, small window probably. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been a really amazing discussion. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank the panel, our panelists for um, being here and having so many great ideas for everybody. Um, I do need to wrap things up, but I want to remind you um, to all of our viewers that I'll be sending out the link to the survey. And if you fill out the survey, remember you get entered in for the drawing to get the $50 gift card. And you also get entered into the grand prize drawing. So please make sure to fill out those surveys. And um, I'm not sure, it'd probably be about a week until this um, recording is up on our YouTube channel. If there's any, if there was anything here that you saw and you 
can't remember it. Uh, we will have this available at PPLD TV on our YouTube channel. And also I have some resources um, like Brittany sent out from some maps. I will also be pushing those out. So um, Alana, if you have any books, yeah, active I'm learning books. List there for you. And um, if okay. you want, I can even put some of the ideas that I had on, on the list too. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah, and Lynn, if you have any um, handouts or anything like that you'd like to share. Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot that over to you. You can put that out there. But I, we're also letting everyone know we're going back to live uh, baby and me yoga, as well as family yoga starts back up at Library 21C uh, in October. So it's the, I, I should have looked this up before we got on this. I think it's going to be the second Saturday of the month. That sounds uh, right. So as we get closer to the fall, you guys can check that out with, with the library. Um, it's a lot of fun. I'm sure depending on where we are COVID wise, there'll probably be maybe reservations or something to be made. But um, yeah, so if you wanna come do some active motion learning with either little ones or more toddler up to preschool, like grade school age kids, we'll be doing that in the fall. Awesome. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you all again and uh, have a great night. Thank you. See you around.